Minecraft is a game with many varied biomes in it, but perhaps none are stranger than its mushroom islands. These are alien worlds where normal mobs don't spawn, trees don't grow, and villagers don't settle. Amidst these towering mushrooms, you are perhaps safer than anywhere else in Minecraft, while simultaneously lacking access to some of the essential resources for survival in Minecraft. Today we see what happens when the mushroom biome covers the whole world. Is it possible to beat Minecraft in a mushroom world? The parameters of our challenge today are simple. We will generate a Minecraft world on the most recent Java edition of the game, which consists solely of one massive mushroom biome with bonus chests off. Then without resorting to creative mode or cheats, we will have to make our way to the end, beat the Ender Dragon, and watch those credits roll. Can we do it? Let's find out. We start our adventure among the mycelium laced and mushroom populated coasts of this world of ours. Now the mushroom biome is interesting to say the least. On the one hand, mushrooms are, as you might expect, extremely plentiful in it. Mushrooms, of course, are edible, which means our food situation is already taken care of. Except for the fact that you can't actually eat mushrooms in Minecraft without also possessing wooden bowls, just like in real life. Unfortunately, trees, the main source of wood you would generally be using to craft your wooden bowls, don't exist in the mushroom world. Along with many of the sources of wood we've relied on in previous challenges where trees weren't present, like villagers and shipwrecks. But that's not to say that we are doomed to starvation. A decent quantity of fungi-infected cattle roam this land with us. The best way to get food from them is milking their stew into a wooden bowl. Which again, isn't really an option for us right now. But what we can do is kill them for their steaks. But even that isn't really ideal as a long-term strategy for two reasons. Firstly, there's no grass to get seeds from in the mushroom biome, which means we can't grow wheat, which means we can't breed the mushrooms, which means if we rely on killing them for food, it might not be long before we've depopulated the entire population in our vicinity. But even more tragically, since we don't have wood, we don't have a pickaxe, which means we can't harvest stone, which means we can't make a furnace, which means we're stuck consuming beef tartare, which is not nearly as calorically efficient as cooked steak would be. So basically, we need to find a way to acquire wood, and ideally sooner rather than later. And the only way that really calls out to me right now is by seeking out a mineshaft. Now mineshafts, surprisingly enough, aren't exactly a rare occurrence in Minecraft. That being said, I'm not exactly looking forward to painstakingly searching for one. Just the mere fact that they're underground makes intentionally looking for one a bit of a pain, since obviously you can see less at once and generally speaking cover ground more slowly while exploring caves as opposed to running about the surface. The prospect is made even more daunting when recognizing the fact that we don't have much in the way of tools to aid us in our subterranean exploration. I did manage to find a golden axe and a pair of golden shovels in a chest near a broken nether portal, but still, realistically what we'd want here is a pickaxe, which we do not have. Oh well. In any case, we don't really have other options, so there's nothing really to do here but put in the work and try to find that mineshaft. We'll just have to scour the countryside, entering every cave we spot, and perhaps even punching our way through stone until eventually we find one. I wouldn't hold my breath to find it quickly, but hopefully we will find it. And hey, in one key respect, it is easier here than it would be in other worlds. You see, in mushroom biomes, hostile mobs don't spawn regardless of the presence of darkness. So though our mineshaft search will likely be long and tedious, it'll at least be relatively safe. Wait, wait a minute. Is that what I think it is? I'll be. I was certainly not expecting to be lucky enough to find one on my very first night of searching. But hey, I'll take it. So much for the supposedly elusive mineshafts, eh? That being said, this discovery isn't quite as exciting as I may have at first thought it would be. For this mineshaft is 
perhaps the smallest one in Minecraft history. Seriously, it consists of just like five corridors. That's it. So there's not exactly a wealth of wood here, but a mineshaft is a mineshaft, and a mineshaft, no matter how small, can still provide the wood needed to finally start advancing down the Minecraft tech tree. We advance through wood, stone, and iron ages one right after the other. Not only do our tools improve, but along the way we also acquire great boons like bowls and buckets. Okay, I'm um, come to think of it, it was mostly just containers for holding various liquids, but still, those containers are greatly important to us. Bowls finally give us the ability to enjoy some healthy, renewable mushroom stew, and buckets enable the construction of another portal. That's right, the time has come to dive into the bowels of hell to acquire ender pearls and blaze rods. The ingredients to the oh-so-essential Eyes of Ender. The nether portal ended up coming out in the middle of a warped forest. This is a wonderful development for us, as warped forests are prime hunting grounds for endermen, which of course drop those ender pearls we so need. Having the portal itself located within one is unspeakably convenient. This forest also serves as a plentiful source of wood, so yeah, that issue is now thoroughly resolved. Now as for locating blaze rods, in theory the challenge we have subjected ourselves to today should not make this section of the game all that much different or more difficult than it would normally be. We just need to explore the nether until we come across a nether fortress, and then once there, kill loads of the blazes which reside within. The only issue is my standard, terrible luck with actually stumbling upon one. Eventually, though, I did reach one. It only nearly starved on the way back. So there we go, after a bit of enderman farming, we have everything we need to construct our eyes of ender, and therefore are ready to go to the end. Right? Well, not quite. I still have yet to build for myself a decent means of combating the ender dragon. My two go-to methods are beds and bows. Unfortunately, they are a bit difficult to come by in this challenge. Beds are constructed from wood and wool. Now wood, we've already managed to obtain a plentiful supply. But wool is another matter entirely. The main way to get wool is by shearing sheep. Unfortunately, sheep don't spawn in mushroom biomes. There's also not, as far as I'm aware, any structures made of wool that occur naturally in mushroom plains and hills either. But not to worry. If you can't get wool directly, you can always craft some string into it. If you have lots of string, that is. Which I do not. The primary way of gaining string is, of course, by killing spiders. Unfortunately, just like all of the other hostile mobs, without a spawner, spiders don't spawn in mushroom biomes. So that sort of rules out that way of sourcing string. What I can do is use a sword to harvest the cobwebs from my mineshaft, but as has already been brought up, it's the smallest mineshaft in the history of Minecraft, and therefore contains barely any cobwebs to harvest. There was, however, enough string in it to craft a bow. So perhaps the bow and arrow approach would be better. Now, as I just said, getting the bow is no problem. Arrows, however, are a bit of a problem. There are two main ways to obtain arrows. Either you can craft them yourself with sticks, flint, and feathers. Of course, those feathers are obtained by killing chickens, which, again, do not spawn in the mushroom biome. So that sorta of rules out that possibility. Alternatively, you can get arrows by killing skeletons, which, repeat after me, don't, don't spawn in the mushroom biome. biome. That being said, they do spawn in a biome in the nether, which I ran across during my nether fortress search. So we could source our arrows from there. It would be a bit annoying to travel all that way again, though. So I'd rather not. Alternatively, we could find a few diamonds which we could craft into an enchantment table, and potentially enchant a bow with infinity, thus making the small quantity of arrows we already have last long enough for the ender dragon fight. I opted for an all of the above approach. First, I searched for diamonds, which given the mushroom biome's complete lack of hostile mob spawning, was a very safe, peaceful endeavor. In the process, I actually did end up discovering another mineshaft, this one much larger than the previous one, and containing a cave spider spawner, as well as just loads of cobwebs. That means we now have the string for the bed approach, as well as the diamonds for the enchantment table approach. There we go. That is half a dozen beds, crafted. Additionally, I now have an enchantment table, which I used to enchant my bow. Albeit I didn't get infinity, just power two instead. Now I guess I could go to the end with basically just the beds, but I'd rather not. I do like having the arrows too, so a trip to the nether it is. 
Okay, uh, 28 arrows, that should be enough, right? Hopefully. Okay, now it's time to find the stronghold, which is easily done. And go to the end. But first, as it turns out, there was an enchanted book with infinity hidden in one of the stronghold's chests. So let's just go ahead and add that to our power two bell. See, this is why you always bring nearly a stack of iron ingots with you on these sorts of excursions. You never know when you might have the sudden need to craft an anvil. There we go. Now it is time to insert those eyes of Ender, then fight the end dragon. The fight was standard end dragon battle fair. I went into it pretty well equipped, even including fully enchanted armor and weapons. And honestly, the beds really didn't come up. I was more than content to shoot the dragon with my power 2 infinity bow, which ultimately delivered the final blow to the ender dragon. So to answer the question raised at the beginning of this video, yes, it is possible to beat Minecraft in a mushroom world. I hope you enjoyed this journey, if you did, please try checking out my other Minecraft challenges like beating the game while all dirt is lava or while all stone is bedrock. But in general, if you like what you've seen here today, please like, subscribe, and share this video on your social medias. And if you have any ideas for challenges for me to try in the future, please leave them in the comments below. But anyways guys, until next time, I have been Seamacraft, hoping for my next challenge to be a success as well. Goodbye.